Yo, what is good, everybody? It is your boy, Golden, Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. I am back. And uh, this is What If Isagi Was a Genius, part one. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. But if you're watching this or listening to this on Spotify, make sure to leave a follow and a five star rating. And uh, yeah, I don't have that much else to say. I'm excited to get into the what if. So let's just get right into it. Let's get it. Isagi Yoichi is born an absolute mastermind. Okay, maybe not necessarily born a mastermind. But to a certain extent, when he was young, he would show signs of absolute brilliance. He would skip grades. He would show everyone around him the best and the most high level test scores. He would test out of everything. But everyone thought Isagi was destined to be a scholar, destined to change the world, change Japan, change everything through his mind. But Isagi, he may have been a genius, but he loved and loves football. He absolutely, absolutely adores the sport and wants to play it as much as possible. And at a young age, he seemed to actually be extremely talented on the field as well. But frankly, the most important and the most impressive thing about Isagi isn't that he's extremely good at football because i mean yeah he's pretty damn good but at the same time there may be people better than him with that said though it's really the iq he can somehow play with but it's not just iq it's kind of odd when other people's people describe it it's as if he's a genius on the field as if he sees 20 30 40 steps ahead and he knows where to exactly exactly where to put people no matter what and it's kind of like he has everything pre-planned and that would be the truth of it isagi sees things so differently and if you give him prep time if you give him absolute prep time it's a different story. Isagi being an absolute genius would put him in scenarios where it would lead him to kind of have a lot of free time. And that free time would go to football and he absolutely loves it. And this would lead him to playing football at a pretty high level, but also for a high school. Isagi would be be playing a game one game before his um, or before the Nationals He'd play in a game. This game was against Kira, someone very talented and someone that's been on Isagi's radar for a while now. But he knows that with proper game planning and proper situations, they will win no matter what. And before this, days before this, he studied hours of film. But that is it. He didn't really have to study that much of the film. He studied about a couple hours of the film and then he put himself in a position where it was pretty damn easy to analyze everything that was going on. Like seriously, he would set up complete and utter game plans to more or less counter every single last thing this team does. And it's perfect. Isagi's game plan is perfect. It seems like the first set play that Kira's team comes out to well, let's just say is one that gets shut down and destroyed immediately. Isagi knows that every single time, every single time Kira does a certain thing, especially on the field, he knows how to counter it. He just needs his body to be able to react and be able to counter it. And that's, the, that's what he's been working on for years now. He's been training hard, working hard, and he's been working day in and day out on this. His him being a genius and him studying at colleges, at, at universities, at the highest levels, obviously prevents him from fully taking on this capability. But him also being a genius helped him maintain the ego that he didn't have so long ago. Isagi wants to plan and wants to show that he is so much better than every single team he steps on the field with 
but his genius really shows in these set games. His genius really shows in that game against Kira where they absolutely dissect them entirely winning 3-0. Now, even Kira is baffled by the fact that Isagi was able to do these things and baffled by the fact that Isagi was able to be capable of doing these things. He would talk to Isagi or Kira and Isagi would talk to each other and they would talk about how he was able to figure out all of their game plans and stuff like that. Isagi just tells him that it was all predictability. That at the end of the day, he knew what the weaknesses of their team were. So he knew that plans were going to come out to more or less stop him through via weakness or via those weaknesses. And also there were weaknesses or lots of weaknesses for Kira's team and they have to exploit them. And he continued to exploit them over and over and over again. And he would tell Kira this and make it very, very transparent that he's just thinking 10 miles ahead, 50 billion steps ahead. It's as if he's just in a different universe, a different plane of existence compared to all of these people. He uses his brain far more than his brawn, more than his body, anything. His skill on the football field, yeah, it's pretty good. But, and he might be pretty decent at everything, but at the same time, it's not like he's some crazy good player. Even Kira realized this. He's talented, don't get me wrong. Everyone that plays at a decently high level is talented, but he knows that, well, Isagi is not that talented. He's just super, super smart and just super in-depth at everything. His genius allows him to come up with new ways of scoring, new ways of playing defense, and new ways of countering these people that need to be countered, and that's exactly what this game was all about, and it was extremely impressive, and maybe that's even an understatement calling it impressive, that's just an absolute masterclass by Isagi, and that's at the end of the day what it is, but with all that said, his genius would surely be put to the test sooner rather than later. And the reason for his genius to be put to the test is a letter that would come in the mail. He would speak to his mother, he would speak to his father, and he would read this letter. This letter would actually surprise Isagi, and he would really, really make him think. He decides that he's going to take on this, this letter's challenge, this training camp, and he's not sure. He's not 100% sure what's even going on in terms of this training camp, but he decides why not? Let's let's give it a shot, especially because it's supposed to make him a better player. He thinks to himself that a position-based camp, and when he would arrive at this brand new facility, he would learn that he was more or less correct. This is a position-based camp. This is, seems to be all for strikers. Because when he's there, he sees not only Kira, but he sees a ton, a ton of other strikers. Isagi would wait, and eventually the one that runs everything would show up. His name is Jimpachi Ego. Isagi would listen to him and listen to his whole ideology, but let's be honest, his ideology has a couple holes. Not that it's completely wrong, and Isagi's not saying anything like that, but there are quite a couple holes in his ideology that would make Isagi question exactly what he means and exactly who he is. And he continues to kind of listen to this man as he speaks, and as he does, he would learn more and more about what he believes and also what he thinks a true good striker is a true elite striker and frankly the information he's gaining from him is pretty interesting and pretty well kind of important isagi is absorbing this information just thinking more and more about what this man is saying and he's learning a lot and learning everything he needs to learn and this is perfect for isagi because the more he learns the more he adapts, and the more he actually figures out for himself. And that's just the bottom line of it. Isagi continues to just listen to this man speak, listen to what he believes, listen to his ideologies, and Isagi would come to his own conclusions. 
Not that the man is a psychopath or anything like that, but that the man is very, very passionate. That he believes certain things, and it seems like there is going to be no way and no, no chance of him believing anything different. And that's fine. Having this ideology doesn't hurt the man by any means. I mean, not at all, actually. Isagi believes that a lot of the things he's saying are completely and utterly true. That having an ego as a football player is something that you definitely should have. And if you don't have it, well, honestly, it's probably more of a down or a downside than an upside. And some may disagree with that. Some may say, oh, well, having an ego will make you harder to play with and so on. But Isagi doesn't think so at all. If, if a true striker needs or needs to more or less have an ego, that makes a lot of sense to him. A true striker should be certain or certain that he's going to score a goal. A true striker should know that he's going to score a goal. And that is what matters. A true striker is what matters. Now, these are the things Isagi hears and these are the things Isagi thinks about, at least when listening to what's going on. And Isagi begins to actually bring his own beliefs into the fray as well. He believes that if he brings in his own beliefs too, that it will be beneficial for himself and also, well, this place as well. I mean, he's extremely, extremely smart. And he believes a lot of things. So th him him kind of being like, okay, well, I believe that or I do believe to a certain extent that this guy, this kind of psychopath of a guy, let's not get it twisted. He is kind of crazy. But this like psychopath of a guy really does have some good points. Then, well, Isagi is going to more or less thrive off of that. He's going to learn extremely quick, and at the end of the day, yeah, he's a genius, but what comes with being a genius is that he's absolutely gifted in learning. He's absolutely gifted in understanding and learning more and more, and that's what matters to him. Understanding, learning, and so on. Isagi believes that all of this will intertwine with itself, and everything that he's learning now will help him in the long run especially at this place they're currently at because well he knows that this place is do or die he hears from jimpachi ego that if you get eliminated from blue lock this this new brand or this brand new place if you get eliminated your dreams of being a striker are gone just like that it doesn't matter what you say doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter anything your chances are zero of becoming a striker on the national team of Japan. And everybody is obviously shocked to hear this, but Isagi thinks that this does, to a certain extent, make sense. I mean, why would they have someone on the national team, especially as a striker or even as a player in general, if they can't beat out everybody here in Blue Lock? But this would excite Isagi. And Isagi would see this as a brand new venture for himself and would see this as a tr as a thing for him to try himself and try to become better at. Isagi believes that there are many, many things in terms of this world that make him scared. But at the same time, he knows that he needs to face those things and that may include what he's doing now. He believes that if he faces this thing head on, he believes that if he takes on this challenge, well, it might just send him over the edge to being a, a absolute amazing striker. A striker that nobody will be able to stop. His genius will shift over to not only, well, well not only uh, his, his gameplay, not only his mind, but his genius will shift over to just everything he does in the world now. Now this is something Isagi can be excited about. This is something that Isagi is excited about. So Isagi takes his chances and he walks through those doors. He walks through those doors for Blue Lock and when he enters, 
he knows that there is no going back. Isagi knows that if he wants to stop, if he wants to go home and he wants to be a normal just kid again, he can. Even though, I mean, come on. Let's be honest, he doesn't have anything to worry about in terms of, well, he could go home and be an absolute business mogul if he wanted to be. But at the same time, that's not what excites him. What excites him is the game of football. And that's all that excites him. Isagi would walk through those doors, like I said, and he would get ready, get dressed, get situated, and then be in his, well, designated room of Team Z. He would look around and he would see these people, all different shapes, sizes, looks, frames, everything. Immediately he's analyzing. He's seen some of these people before. He knows their games. He immediately starts analyzing more and more. He thinks to himself that he needs to understand every last person here. He begins to think about every single one of them. He actually knows about Chigiri, knows about knows about Kunigami, knows about some somewhat somewhat about Bachira. Actually knows something about Raichi. He knows practically everyone there, at least to a certain extent. There's levels to how much he knows though, some on the higher end, some on the lower end. And he actually knows about Chigiri's injury, which is something he'll think about, at least for now. Because if this is a competition between all of them, well, that's something they need to figure out in the long run. With all that said though, Isagi hears that there is going to be a bit of a challenge amongst all of them to thin the herd. And he thinks about this and thinks to himself what that challenge could be and he wouldn't even think that it was going to be a game of tag. This game of tag is something different than anything he's ever heard of. It actually has to do with kicking a football and if you get hit by it, you're it. So that's what he kind of prepares for and with limited time the ball would drop out of the sky and whoever, well whoever is it at the end of it loses and gets eliminated from blue log forever now everything begins ball drops out of the sky and everyone begins to scramble isagi understands that he knows or he knows exactly what to do to avoid getting hit so that's what he does he avoids getting hit entirely and he avoids every single person there and he does it with relative ease he dodges he dips dodges dives everything and he just puts himself in really good positions so he doesn't have to worry about getting hit by the ball. He lasts out the entirety of the time, but as the time would kind of trickle down, a, a bit of a brawl would begin. And it seems like Bachira, the one that was sleeping, is looking to eliminate the one and only Kira. And something within Isagi, seeing that Kira's number is actually higher than his because frankly it would be because isagi was more of a team player and he wouldn't get as much out of it all and most people don't know of his hyper intelligence in terms of well his game planning they don't they don't even keep that into account and even jampachi ego didn't really think about that too much in terms of post or pre-game planning in his in his way of playing football with that said though Isagi would see an opportunity to eliminate Kira, and he would take it, and even everybody would be shocked, including Bachira, thinking that Isagi was just one of those people that kind of hung back and just didn't want any business with doing, doing the dirty work, but he was impressed. He thinks Isagi might be the monster he's been looking for, but how is he, how is he hiding such a monster? But then he realizes Isagi is the one, the kid, the little kid in the papers, the papers all over the news and all over the newspaper was Isagi being an absolute genius. Nobody really realizes it, but Batra does, but he decides to keep this under wraps. He doesn't want to expose Isagi. Maybe Isagi wants it to be this way, but maybe he doesn't. They'll find out in the long run. With all that said though, the, the games would be over. Kira would be eliminated and he would he would yell toward Isagi asking why he would do that but Isagi wouldn't say much he wouldn't say anything not anything at all he would just await 
whatever is going to happen next. And he would listen as Jinpachi Ego would explain what is going to occur very, very soon. He would listen to Jinpachi Ego as he speaks, and he would just figure out that that the next part of this would be team orientated. And once he hears that, he knows that this game, this little blue lock stint is over. Because even if he doesn't have necessarily a ton of tape on these people, he can obviously set up crazy plans and game plans for his team. And he even begins to tell them that. That he can set them up with game plans. He's been doing that forever and he actually used to do that. He was practically the head coach of his own team. Everyone kind of is a little skeptical. But Bachura would say that since he's already seemingly exposing himself to this idea that he's extremely intelligent. He points at Isagi and says and asks if they do not recognize him. That he's the genius kid that was all over the news not so long ago. Everyone is c confused about this, asking, or basically talking about how he was a young kid, but Bachira says that, yeah, that it was the case, but I think the stories were actually talked about far, far later in his life than early in his life, so he wasn't affected by it as much. In which Isagi would confirm this, saying that he is that kid, and yes, he, he is, well, dignified as a genius, but tells the, he tells them not to worry about that. If, he, if they want to win out in this so-called game, it's going to be 11 versus 11. And at the end of the day, strikers aren't made to be on the same team. And not all of them, not all 11. Jinpachi Ego may say that that's how it started, but there's a reason why the game isn't that way anymore. But Isagi says that there are advantages, though, to all of it. He begins to draw out a ton of game plans. It's as if he had these game plans on a script already, and he shows them. If they all buy in, they all will get their turn, and they will all be benefiting from every single last part of this. But he begins to draw out that what he needs per, per position, and what he needs in every single slot for every single game plan. Everybody watching this says that that is insane do they really think that they have this like they have people like this he needs a speedster for this game plan or this this one game plan and he needs a, an absolute elite passer for another someone that could shoot from long distances he tells them that they're all strikers he assumes that there's at least one of them total he also for this game plan which would be like the 50th game plan he has and everybody would be saying that it's they gotta he has to narrow it down but he shows that he needs an athletic one one that is not, is willing to give up his body entirely in which gagamaru would intervene saying that he is someone that fits that role perfectly he shows off his jumping ability during some of their workouts and, and so on and isagi would realize that this is literally the perfect person for this game plan so he tells them that if they're all going to buy in if they're so skeptical about these game plans, let's start with the Gagumaru game plan. And, well, everyone, you know what? They say, let's do it. But if it starts failing, they're going to put this into their own hands. Isagi says that's fine, and he shows them a bunch of defensive game plans as well, and tells them that if they properly and effectively use, this, use multiple sections of this defense, that it will be easy to stop anyone. And once they start getting more info about how these people play, well, let's just say the better these game plans are going to get and the easier it's going to be to stop these people in their tracks. Isagi begins to set everyone up and not too, not too long later, their, their first game would be ready to go. Their first game against Team X. Now, Isagi is excited about this. He wants to see if his game plans work properly, which, I mean, assumingly he, it would work properly and also probably work perfectly. And when the game would obviously start and begin, Isagi would watch as his team wouldn't do what the other team does. The other team would be reckless, be stupid, and they would try to grab the ball all recklessly and stuff. But his team was smart, calculated. They would end up getting the ball, keeping it away from their primary player, in which Isagi points out immediately who it is, the one and only Shoei Bado. And they ask how he even knows him, and he says that he knows everybody, even to a certain extent. He knows more about others, but 
less about others as well. It really depends on this. There's like a scale for him. Some of them he knows a lot about. Some he knows very little. But that, that person right there, Shoei Baro, there is plenty, plenty info on him. And he tells them this just straight up. And they, he tells them that as long as he they get him frustrated and they get they get his team to stop trusting him, then it won't matter. It won't matter one freaking bit. Isagi's team would set up a perfect play for Gagamaru, and this Gagamaru play would be a beautiful one. Chip passes to a long bomb of a pass, and Gagamaru diving across the field, and it, it seems as if everybody is in perfect position, even the other team manipulated perfectly to the point that Gagamaru gets an easy kick in and he and it's really only him that can stretch the way he was stretching his leg across the field he he scores a goal for his team and they all celebrate and it seems like the team is slowly but surely buying in even more and it's pretty impressive to to the way that Isagi can kind of do these things pretty impressive to the way that Isagi can come up with these things and even on the fly, Isagi is kiting and guiding traffic extremely well. He is the facilitator. And they even stick him more at like a midfielder type of position because he's like that facilitator at the end of the day. They all tell him that he's going to play the midfielder position or be a midfielder, at least for now. And Isagi says he has no problem with it. He loves football and he'll adapt to whatever they need to adapt to. He feels that he is the most adaptable player, at least in terms of just understanding the game. And more game plans would spur on throughout this game as Isagi would learn more and more about the weaknesses of Bado's team, but also the positives of his own team. This game alone would show how many levels above in terms of thinking Isagi is. Isagi straight up is outthinking, outwitting, out everything everyone on the field isagi absolutely destroys bato's team and shows how dominant his team is threatening to be in the near future of course bato is a talented prospect and there is no way around that but even as isagi knows that he, that bato is a large wild card that bato isn't really fit for team play and that's the type of play isagi is necessarily playing but even for himself throughout this game, he's even sets him out himself up for a beautiful goal because he knows where to be and where to be at that moment. Gagamaru sliding across, headering it to him, a beautiful, a beautiful setup for Isagi. He headers the ball in and it's as if nobody's even there. Unprepared is something Isagi refuses to be and is something that he always will be is prepared. So the game would end, Shoei Bato's team or Team X would fall not just short, but would fall extremely hard on their face. And let's just say Isagi's ready for whatever's going to happen next. That next team is Team Y, and he begins studying immediately. He studies their film, comes up with a game plan, and the game plan is sound. The game plan is obvious. He knows who their strengths and weaknesses are. He knows what they're capable of. Nico and Okawa are two people that they need to pay attention to. And that's just the fact of the matter. Pay attention to them. They'll be just fine. He explains to them all of all of the game plan. Explains to them what sets they're going to try and run. And they actually do practice this because everyone buys in. Everyone is put in a position where they feel as if they're important to the game plan. And that's frankly part of the striker's ego let's be honest part of the striker striker's ego is the fact that they want to feel utilized a lot of these strikers and even isagi knows this being the genius he is there's even an argument that he's a genius manipulator because he knows that they all want to feel included they all want to feel important and if they do then there will be no complaints and that's exactly what isagi makes sure that he does for his team he makes sure that all of them feel important, including people like Raichi and people that wouldn't really play that much offense, but would play hell of a defense that they would be just as important setting up other people and setting up everyone for their, for their basically their greater gameplay and their greater way of playing the game of football. 
and it's it's honestly fantastic at the end of the day isagi knows that the he that everybody needs to understand that there's a role to play and yes there is an ego that everyone does have and he understands this he knows that they want to find their own goals because he wants to find his own goals too but those goals will be found especially with his perfect cycle of game planning some people do are kind of against this idea of kind of going based on a script like it's as if it's everything is scripted but isagi tells them to think of him as a facilitator that he wants to set up everybody and game plans change on the fly so they will change mid game as well and he'll be able he'll be able to show them that very very quickly and if they understand every single game plan let's say they have 50 different game plans of attack and he tells them hey run number 47 or so, some code name that the effectiveness of their offense as a team would be absolutely insane and it's going to continue to be insane but with that said, Isagi's team would go off and take on Team Y. But the game against Team Y and the ensuing domination would have to wait until Part 2. So if you enjoyed, show some love. Leave a like, leave a sub, and leave a comment down below. All that good stuff. And I hope you all enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, if you're on Spotify, like I said, make sure to leave a follow and a 5-star rating. If you're on YouTube, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. As always, um, you can always interact on um, on Spotify as well. And if you don't, if you're watching this on YouTube and you don't know I have a Spotify, check the link in the description, boys. Real talk. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say. Hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.